student at uh, TU Darmstadt, and he'll talk about uh, secure and scalable aggregate network at a station. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to my talk, SANA Secure and Scalable Aggregate Network at the Station, which is a joint work with the University of Padova, Intel, and IBM. So first, what is Remote at the Station? Remote at the Station is an interactive protocol between a trusted party denoted by the verifier and a remote entity denoted by the prover, through which the verifier wants to check if the prover is in a trustworthy state. So the protocol goes as follow, as follows, the verifier sends a random challenge or an answer to the prover. On the prover side, a trusted component generates a measurement of the untrusted software, hash, for example, authenticate this measurement and sends it back to the prover, the, to the verifier. The verifier on its turn verifies the MAC, check the measurement. If it's as, ex as expected, it accepts it. <clears throat> So current industrial trends envision systems that are formed of a really big number of devices. Examples include cyber physical systems, such as smart factories and house and building and office automation, and transport, such as automotive and marine systems, and smart devices, such as smart gadgets, gadgets and pacemakers. So our problem is how to attest a network of multiple or a large number of connected devices and check if they are in the correct state. So existing work on this topic assumes that all the devices in the network have this secure component that I talked about. So all the devices are to be attested. They have a secure component. It only considers protocol attacks where the adversary can eavesdrop, modify, delete, or insert messages in the network and software attacks where the verifier can only modify the untrusted software by inserting malware or viruses. However, the adversary cannot uh, attack the trusted component. Uh, and based on this, the verifier can trust any device on this network, for example, D3, to attest its neighbors. And if this D3, for example, is physically attacked, the trusted component is attacked, the secrets of D3 are leaked, then the neighbors of D3 that are software compromised, or at least the neighbors of D3 that are software compromised, will evade detection by the verifier. So this is the main problem that we aim by SANA to mitigate. So we redefine the objectives for a secure network at the station. We have the same requirements of SEDA, which are efficiency, scalability, flexibility, and applicability to low-end devices. And we add on this hardware assumptions, so we don't have to assume that all devices in the network have this secure component, so only the devices to be attested, and resiliency to physical attacks. So in a one-device setting, it's not probable that the device would be physically attacked, but in a very large network of devices, it's high probable that at least one device in this network would be physically attacked. So on a network at the station protocol, we should consider the possibility of phys physical attacks, and we say that if a device is physically attacked, at least it shouldn't harm other devices or help other devices evade detection. So our system model is as follows. We have a network of devices. We have a trusted verifier. The devices are heterogeneous. They can have different hardware and software configurations, and each device can communicate, at least communicate to its direct neighbor. Here we say only to its neighbor. Uh, <clears throat> so in our new protocol, we divide the devices into two types of devices, reporting devices and accumulating devices. The reported devices, denoted by D, generate their attestation reports, and they are to be attested, and the aggregating or accumulating devices aggregate these reports and send them to the verifier. So our assumption is that only reporting devices should have this secure hardware component required for attestation. Consequently, a physically attacked aggregator cannot do anything because it doesn't even have, it, it's not assumed to be secure, it doesn't even have any secure components or any secrets. 
while a physically attacked proving or reporting devices can only evade its own detection. Uh, now I explain a bit about aggregation or how to implement these aggregating devices. So we, inv we investigated two types of aggregation or sign signature aggregation, which are multi-signature schemes that allow aggregation on the same message and have a constant overhead and aggregate signature schemes that allows aggregation on different messages and have a linear overhead. Uh, before going into aggregate signature, I would like to introduce some uh, cryptographic problems or hard problems. So the Cody Feldman problems are as follow. The computational Cody Feldman problem is given G and G to the A, and you have H, so you want to compute H to the A. This is the Cody Feldman problem, the computational Cody Feldman problem. The decision Cody Feldman problem is that you have G and G to the A. You have H and H to the B. You want to decide whether A equal B or whether the tuple G, G to the A, H, H to the B is a Diffie-Hellman tuple. Uh, a problem is called hard if there is no polynomial time algorithm that can solve this problem. Otherwise, if there is an efficient polynomial time algorithm that can solve it, it's called easy. A gap Diffie-Hellman group is a group that where the computation code Diffie-Hellman problem is hard and the decision code Diffie-Hellman is easy. So go back to multi-signatures. A multi-signatures are, are formed of at least three algorithms. A sign algorithm that takes a message M and different secret keys SK1 to SKN and generate a signature on M. An, aggreg an, aggregate, an aggregation uh, algorithm MALT that takes signature, different signatures with different secret keys on the same message M and generate a more compact signature that is faster to verify. And a verification algorithm that takes the aggregated compact signature and the public key of the group, which can be the list of all public keys of the devices in the group or a function on the public keys of the devices in the group and decides whether the signature is valid or not. <clears throat> so if we relate this to our problem, the provers have to do the signing, the aggregators do the aggregation or the mult, and the verifiers do the verification. And give an example on a multi-signature scheme based on bi bilinear maps. Consider the three uh, gap Diffie-Hellman groups, G1, G2, and GT, having generators small g1, g2, and gt, a bilinear map E from g1, g2 to gt, so that E of g1x, g2x equals gt to the xy. So the secret key of every device, ski, would be equal to a random number xi and zp. The public key is g2 to the xi, and the public key of the group is the multiplication of all public keys. The sign algorithms, the sign algorithm, take a message M and SKI and uh, generate the signature as hash of the message to the XI. And the multi algorithm takes different signature and, and outputs the aggregation as multiplication of these signatures. And the verification algorithm checks of the, if the E of the aggregated uh, message with G2 is equal to E hash of the message with the uh, group public key, and this is simply checking of the message, the aggregated signature, G2, the hashed message, and the group public key is a, a Diffie-Hellman tuple. So as we can see, the aggregate, the aggregation of a multi-signature aggregates signatures on the same message, so it doesn't allow aggregation of signature on different message, and it doesn't, it does, doesn't allow heterogeneity the size of the generated aggregation and the verification time is constant in the number of signers who signed this message. So if we used it, it, it will give us scalability. On the other hand, we have aggregate signature schemes. The same thing, we have a sign, which take different messages, M1 to MN, and sign them with different secret key, SK1 to SKN, generating different signatures. The aggregate the aggregation algorithm AG 
or aggregate that takes signature and different messages with different secret keys and generate a more compact, uh, shorter, faster to verify aggregate signature. And the verification algorithm that takes the aggregate signature, the public key of the group, and decides whether the signature is valid or not. Same setting, example from bilinear maps, same secret key, random number from ZP, public, same public key, however, the group public key is the set of individual public keys of each devices. To sign a message, the same thing, you hash it, rise it to the XI, to aggregate two messages, you multiply them. However, to verify <coughs> the aggregate, uh, to verify the aggregate signature, you have to calculate the linear map of each message with each public key, multiply them, and <clears throat> compare them to the bilinear map of the aggregate signature and the generator. So if you can see here, it needs uh, n times bilinear map computations. So to summarize for this two, aggregate signature schemes allow aggregation of aggregation of different uh, of signatures on different messages, which provide heterogeneity. However, the size of the signature generated as well as the verification time is linear and the number of signers, which provides no scalability. So we came up with something we call optimistic aggregate signatures, which is basically a, comp a combination of a multi-signature and an aggregate signature. So the basic simple idea is like this. You have different messages. You apply the aggregation of multi-signatures on the messages that are the same. And on the results, you apply the aggregation of an aggregate signature. And then you get a shorter message than aggregate signature, which is faster to verify. However, it also allows aggregation on different messages. So we have here both heterogeneity and scalability. Uh, our construction, we, do, we did a construction based on bilinear maps, based on pairings. The size of the signature and our construction is linear and the number of messages different than a default message to be signed. Uh, it's also linear in the number of signers who didn't sign or signed the message different than the default message. However, it's independent in the network size or in the number of signers in general. The verification time is linear in the number of messages different than the default message. However, it's independent on the number of signers who sign different messages and independent of the number uh, of signers in general. Uh, we call our scheme optimistic scheme because it offers the best performance equal to a multi-signature performance when all the signers sign the same message. And on the other hand, the worst performance equivalent to an aggregate signature when all the signers sign distinct messages. So this is our construction. You can see same uh, public and secret key, same signing and aggregation algorithm. However, the verification algorithm is a combination of the two verifications from the multi and the aggregate signature. Uh, the security of our scheme is based on the computational Diffie-Hellman problem. So we reduce the problem into a computational Diffie-Hellman problem if you can if, you can, uh, if the adversary can produce a, a, a signature, an aggregate signature that attributes a message to an honest signer and that didn't sign this message, then it can break the computational code if Hellman problem. So we go back to our attestation protocol. Uh, the protocol is formed, uh, or the solution, the scheme is formed from three protocols device initialization protocol, where each device is prepared to be added to the network. Each device is provided with the secret key, the OIS secret key that is needed to create an OIS signature. The token request protocol is executed between the verifier and the, between any verifier that wants to attest the network. It's based on public key cryptography, on existing key infrastructure, and not on our OAS signature. And the point of this protocol is to, to pre prevent denial of service attacks that are based on our attestation protocol. So not any verifier can come and verify the network. It needs to 
obtain a token from the owner of the network. And finally, network attestation through which the verifier attests the network by sending the token and getting the report of the devices. Uh, our network attestation protocol, as said, allows untrusted aggregators to aggregate the report and tolerate physical attacks on number of devices in the network. Start with the token request protocol. The verifier and the owner have uh, public key pairs based on existing public key infrastructure. The verifier authenticates itself to the owner by signing a random challenge. Consequently, the owner sends an attestation token, which is basically a signed monotonic counter. Having the secured token, the verifier can now attest the network. The verifier contacts a random aggregator in the network, sends it the attestation token. The token is then flooded in the network. It's actually verified and forwarded till it reaches every device in the network. Consequently, a spanning tree routed at A1 is constructed. And the spanning tree starting from leaf nodes, each device create an OIS signature on its software configuration and send it to its parents. The parents, the aggregator nodes, aggregate the OIS signature and send it to their parents until the signature is received by A1, which sends the final signature to the verifier. Security consideration of our protocol. So since the adversary can't forge an OIS signature or can't create an aggregate that attributes a message to an honest signer that, doesn't, that didn't sign it, then the adversary can't sign any software configuration on behalf on, of any benign device in the network. And since aggregators do not store any secret keys, then physically attacking the aggregator would not give the adversary any benefit. And finally, since, device, since unlike SEDA, devices do not attest their neighbors, rather the attestation is only done at the verifier side, then physically attacking a device won't help any other device evade detection. Evaluation. So we, have, we evaluated our protocol on different topologies, a network of different topologies, mainly trees with different uh, number of children, and we uh, obtained logarithmic results in the number of the networks. We evaluated networks up to 1 million devices, and the, the runtime of the overall protocol was up to 8 seconds in networks found of 1 million devices. We compare our protocol to SEDA, and SEDA's setting, where all devices are low-end to be attested, and our targeted setting, where we allow more powerful aggregators, they don't have to be secure, so any device can be an aggregator, a cloud computer, a router, everything. We, don't, we are not restricted to low-end IoT devices. And we also compare our protocol to an extension of SEDA, which allow the reporting of compromised device. So unlike our protocol, SEDA only reports the number of compromised device in the network. Our protocol reports the IDs of every compromised device in the network. So we simulate an extension of SEDA that does the same thing of our protocol, and the results are as shown. The comparison in SEDA setting, obviously SEDA shows better performance because it's based on symmetric keys and our protocol is based on public key cryptography. So of course we have worse performance. However, in our targeted sec setting where the devices, the aggregators, are more powerful devices, we have, uh, our protocol has only one five second more delay than SEDA. And this 1.5 1 1 .5 seconds corresponds to the time needed to generate an OIS signature in a low and embedded device. However, if we compare our protocol to SEDA ID, they, the two protocols converge to have the same runtime and networks with millions of devices. Finally, or to conclude, uh, in this slides I introduced secure and scalable attestation, which has better resiliency to physical attacks and which also prevents denial of service attacks that weren't prevented by SEDA through this token request protocol. And we also showed how to combine multi and aggregate signature scheme 
to get the best of both worlds. <clears throat> Thanks for your attention. Questions? Time for a few questions. Yeah. Thanks for the talk. Um, I might have missed it at the beginning, but if if there actually is um, a uh, uh, failed signature, um, is it easy to detect which um, which of the millions of devices is the bad one? And uh... Uh, well, you actually have the public key of the failed devices included in the report, so you can. Right, but you're you're aggregating all the signatures, and so. Uh, somewhere along the line, you see there's a failed signature. Is it, uh, is it uh, trivial to figure out which of the uh, signatures failed? So the, ag the signature itself is a multiplication of the signatures. However, the report includes also the public key of the failing devices. So knowing these public keys, you can verify the signature and you can detect the failing devices. One other question? So in a practical deployment, um, I guess one of your security guarantees is that you, you, you can't have a forged signature. Um, is there a way, though, in practice to um, identify a signature with a device? So um, we've got all these correct signatures, but how do you know, you know if there's a million signatures and it turns out that there's a million and five devices? Do you know which of the five devices which aren't part of a million? Like you have to associate a signature with a physical device, right? Is that trivial? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get so, the question. Um, I mean, in a real system, if you imagine there was someone trying to forge a physical device and you set up a, a forged device next, somewhere near one of these other million devices, mm -hmm. how do you know which is the device which is part of the legitimate network and which is the, the fake device? So as part of the token request protocol, the owner of the network also sends the group public key so the group public key only contains or is an aggregate of the public keys of the devices that are in the network. This way you can only, you know that you are testing your devices. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? So I thought it was an interesting architecture, the idea of, um, uh, that uh, you would test only to your neighbor. Uh, when you consider the IoT space where the devices are potentially all you know, online and capable of arbitrary communication, uh, do you foresee that your solution provides benefits in that setting as well? Uh, I also didn't hear, didn't really hear what you said about the scenario. Oh, so, you know, consider the, you know, the IoT scenario, you've got these always on sort of publicly addressable devices no. uh, that could potentially, you know, speak directly to the verifier. Uh, whereas in your solution, you have uh, the, uh, the devices, you know, communicate to their neighbors and you know, higher up, way up. Do you foresee that your solution has uh, benefits in that area as well? No, the, so actually the point of the network or, so the point of the protocol is to use the existing network infrastructure for the IoT devices to attest these IoT devices efficiently. So you already have uh, links between the verifier and the device and we want to use these links to make the overhead on the verifier less. So if you want just to send the reports to the verifier, the, this would give would give you a linear overhead on the verifier that I don't think you can handle. One more question about the, um, uh, so what, when do you need a, a non-default signature? Uh, so when you talk about um, you know, the multi-signature scheme, you say, or uh, you know, the scheme is linear in terms of uh, the number of uh, signatures that differ from the default uh, case, yeah. so what would be an example of you know, non-default? So the default case in our protocol is the, uh, the benign software configuration, and the non-default is the uh, compromised software. So the non-default uh, could be any malware software, could be same malware, so same non-default or different non-default, but the default is the benign software configuration. Great, let's thank our speaker.